to a brief time of devotion as we end the year. Just take some water. Yeah, yeah, please. Hey, get in. Uh, okay. If you have a Bible, if you're on your phone or your, uh, you can have a look at uh, Luke chapter 13. I'm gonna share from Luke chapter 13. When it comes to year end and New Year, uh, my I come from a philosophy wherein. Uh, there's, well, there's nothing wrong in picking up a promise verse and studying about it. Uh, it will be more to our benefit if we study, uh, study it with uh, uh, applying the self-evident rules of interpretation that we have. Uh, and I believe uh, we should be looking at things like uh, what did Jesus say about uh, the year? Did they ever Jesus talk about the year? Uh, so we need to look at it at the, from the whole perspective. And uh, while promise verses are good, uh, we also should not forget that uh, uh, 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching. So we should not uh, also pick up a promise verse with uh, uh, like a, you know, like a dice or a roulette or, you know, with a, with a bent of suspicion. So uh, those would be my uh, opening comments. And then I want to look at Luke 13 wherein uh, it's, a, it's a very powerful parable that Jesus narrated uh, starting from verse 6 onwards. Verse 6 onwards, uh, uh, when we look at the world around, uh, uh, if you look at, the, the, look at cricket, we, somebody like Virat Kohli had a very fruitful year, almost 2,500 runs, 2,500 plus runs from all the three formats. Run machine, uh, successful, 50 average in all the three formats. Uh, but when you look at our spiritual life, uh, the question we have to ask ourselves is, has this year been fruitful? And this parable directly talks about that. Uh, and I want to quickly talk, talk about uh, a series of T's that this parable talks about, starting from Luke chapter 13, verse 6. And he told them this parable, a man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. So the first tea, this story, the little story which is so relevant at the end of every new year, at the end of every year and as we start the new year, the end of the year and the start of the new year, this parable is so relevant. I can't think of any other Bible passage more directly relevant than this parable that I'm reading, you, reading to you from, uh, from Luke 13. And it says, uh, look, uh, the first tea this, this parable talks about is uh, the fig tree and it's the tree, okay? And we know if you, uh, I don't have time to take you to the cross references, three in the Bible refers to the country of Israel. And then when uh, Jesus also in his, uh, in his speech uh, uh, about eschatology, the last thing said, or basically said, we are the new Israel. As believers in Christ, uh, what Israel failed to do, we as, you be as believers of the local church, uh, of the present day church, are called to do. Uh, so uh, we are the God is no longer uh, looking at national Israel, but God is looking at new Israel, which is you and me. Uh, God is not looking at a particular uh, race, though he, God has blessed that race, and uh, I don't want to get into that. Even Donald Trump said, "Israel, wait for Jan 20th. I'll be there." All that. So all those things are there. I'm not denying it, but uh, the overall message of the Bible is that uh, God. Uh, is looking to the present body of Christ. That is the hope. As uh, one of the pastors, uh, uh, Bill Hybels, I believe, has said, the local church is the hope of the world. Which means through the, not just the building, but the, through the body of Christ, you know, God is uh, seeking to bless the whole world. So we're not looking at a particular nation. Uh, so uh, the, the tree, and this tree we see is that it is planted in the vineyard. And so that's the first T. And this tree is given a task. That's the second T. And what is the task? It is to bear fruit. Planted in the vineyard. And he came seeking fruit in it. And so that's, that's what the verse says. Luke 13, 6 says, he came looking for fruit. So we are all trees. And, and the Lord who created us, who sent us in this world, is coming towards us looking for fruit. Uh, so that is the, or in other words, we, God sent us in this world with a task. So we are all trees and the second is we, we have a task. So that's why he has given us talents so that 
uh, that's why he has given us a call that's why he has given us uh, so many blessings uh, our call our talents our blessings our privileges all that is just a, a package that God has uh, sent along our way so that we can go and execute that task so what is that task is to bring people who do not know Jesus into the into the kingdom of the Lord Jesus in the one life that we have so take that you know take that talent take that uh, go to the uh, go to the king go to the field and bring people that's what is uh, we are called to do so he came looking for fruit so even to uh, he's looking for fruit how many people we have shared the gospel with how many people uh, how many people have come to Christ or come one step closer to Christ because of our life and because of our testimony even in 2016 that's one thing that we ask and then uh, he found none and verse 7 says he said to the wine dresser look for three years I've been seeking fruit for three years so this one time Jesus used the word year okay uh, for three years I've been seeking fruit on this fig tree and I found none cut it down why should it use up the ground so the third tree is the trash can so which is the un uh, the uh, part of the scriptures which we don't which we pretend doesn't exist there is the teaching on hell and judgment so God says I've given you everything that you need uh, I've sent you this world I've given you my uh, all that you need but if you are consistently deliberately choosing not to bear fruit uh, and the reason for that could be flirting with sin reason for that could be uh, you know a stubborn disobedience and the reason can be anything uh, wrong company and it can be anything uh, God says there is a trash can waiting, okay, and that is eternal hell. And Jesus repeatedly spoke about that uh, in using various figures of speech. And uh, the the organization, the small organization which Ivan and I started uh, ten years ago, is has that uh, that name Jesus used for hell right in the title itself, and that is Gehenna. Uh, in fact, Jesus mentioned that from his own mouth eight times. It's a Greek word for uh, a trash can which burned continuously, and the flame never stopped. The worms never stopped eating the the filth there. Uh, uh, you know that, that is that, that's that's the it was imagery for eternal conscious punishment. That is uh, the lot of anyone who who rejects Christ, and I would say even a believer who stubbornly turns away from Christ stubbornly and finally. So and then verse eight uh, says, and he answered them, Sir, let this let it alone this year also until I dig around it and put manure. So this is the, the fourth T, uh, the tree, task, trash can, and then the tenderness. So the there is there's someone who says, in fact, we know that is the Lord Jesus speaking. Uh, and he says, can we, while well, the gardener says, let's do away with this tree, you know, Jesus uh, says, speaks tenderly. Can we give him one more opportunity? Can we give him one more year of grace? So we don't live in the space age, we live in the grace age. Uh, I don't believe in hyper grace, but I believe in grace. So that is that one more year of extension. He says, why let this tree alone. It's, it's talking about the high priestly ministry of Jesus. Uh, John chapter 17, Jesus praying for believers. Uh, he's the one mediator between God and man. Uh, he is uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 4 if you read that he's the compassionate high priest so he's talking on our behalf he's making prayers on our behalf and uh, so many times we don't know what to pray for ourselves but Jesus sitting at the right hand of the father pleads on his be on our behalf it is not to say that father is angry and Jesus is love no uh, even Jesus was uh, angry and even uh, the father has love it's just that these uh, these images are put in the Bible for us to understand more clearly, but we should not make simplistic theological conclusions saying uh, God the Father is angry, Jesus is loving. No, uh, both, uh, all of the Trinity have uh, aspects of uh, holiness, aspects of love, aspects of wrath, aspects of, you know, everything, all, all of the Trinity, including the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit also can show wrath. The Holy Spirit is also loving. Jesus can show wrath. The Holy Jesus is also loving. And then God the Father is loving and God the Father also can show wrath. So the tenderness. So another opportunity. And then uh, and then it says uh, in verse 9, then it should bear fruit next year. Well and good. If not, you can cut it down. So following the tenderness will be the trimming that means you dig around it so it's using an uh, it, uh, verse 8 talks about digging around it which means 
So in this additional year, God will trim us. And when we trim us, that's the uh, fifth uh, T. Uh, and uh, not only trim us, but also uh, transform us. And the transformation power is not coming from ourselves, but from Him, from the Holy Spirit. Uh, so through the scriptures, as we read the scriptures, through the saints, through the fellowships that we have in the body of Christ. So when they correct us, when they tell us that what you're doing is wrong, uh, you know, when we listen and when what when we listen to biblical counsel and when we turn away from sin. So saints, uh, through the scriptures and uh, through sufferings. In fact, that is one of our greatest teachers. You know, through through pain. You know, uh, that's the message of the book of Job. Uh, uh, and then the psalmist in Psalm 109, uh, in one of his psalms, he says, uh, "It is good that I suffered, so that I will I will learn your law." So the, through suffering, through Scripture, through uh, through fellow, uh, through saints, uh, through the Holy Spirit who works within, you know, God will trim us. And then finally, uh, the, what He gives us is the time time given. It, it shall, if it bears fruit next year, well and good, but if not, you can cut it down. And again, the, the trash can threat comes again. But the thing is, uh, we are given an, the gift of time. The gift of time. It's a great gift. Uh, Warren VSB said, you can't, uh, a great Bible teacher from the British, from the Baptist background uh, from America, one of my favorite Bible teachers, he would say, God can't use your talents and uh, uh, ability if you don't give them your time mm -hmm. so you might have a lot of talents uh, and those talents are given to, uh, given to us by God but for those talents to be used we have to give them our time so uh, and that's that's why and then this we have a gift of the prospect of uh, additional one year 2017 and then so we need to make time so we can use that time for uh, a lot of it for smartphone a lot of it for long phone conversations, a lot of it for, uh, you know, many things that we want to do. But we need to ask ourselves, okay, I've got time, so can I use this time profitably for the Lord in this one life that I have? So uh, I have a book uh, which is written by R. Stanley, and I want to finish with this illustration. So he's talking about that uh, if you compare your life to a day, and, and I'm in my early 40s, so he says, we're using a chart there that you're already in the evening of your life. For a newborn baby, is is it's six o'clock or seven o'clock in the morning. But if you're no if you're age forty, you're already in the evening of your life. And and if you are seventy, it's almost eleven o'clock. It's eleven o'clock in the night. That means if you compare your life to a day, uh, twenty-four hour day. So uh, if you're in the early forties, you're in the evening of your life already. That means I still I just just have another few hours of living left and uh, if I'm if I'm 70 I'm just have a few maybe a few minutes left but if I'm a if I'm a little baby like uh, Ethan I it's, it's I still have in the early early part of the day you know I still have so uh, we just have to very you know we have to be very conscious that God has given us time and we know we need to make it count so the tree the task the trash can the tenderness trimming and uh, the time given and then the trash can threat again he says if not then you can cut it down, which means God's grace uh, cannot be, you know, used as a credit card for sin. That's why the uh, it says, if not, you can cut it down. Comes again in verse nine, uh, Luke thirteen, verse nine. Uh, if you read, we don't have time to do that. If you read Romans six one, Romans six fifteen, and then Titus chapter one sixteen, Titus chapter two eleven to fourteen, Titus three four to eight. You know, the, the uh, Titus especially it talks about grace and always connects grace with good works. So grace is given so that you can do, you can execute good works. Grace is never given in vain. Romans 6, 1, you know, it is not given so that we can live in sin. It's repeated uh, in Romans 6, 1 and 6, 15. So we need to be very, very careful. So uh, I want to finish with this. So, so shall we close our eyes and ask God to, uh, you know, he's given us this additional one more year. As Luke 13 says, Six to nine, so that we can bear fruit. So we need to ask ourselves a question: Have I borne fruit? Uh, have I borne fruit? You know, if I can use this one illustration, there was a time when uh, Rohit Sharma was going through a string of low scores, and then there were some 
people in the selection committee and even uh, some of the international cricket experts like uh, uh, Greg Chappell from of Australia and, and Alan Borer of Australia, they said, persist with him. Give him one more opportunity, then he will make a difference. And then they persisted with him. There were a lot of criticism for that. But then he was the one who took India uh, to the World Cup semi-final 2015 by playing a beautiful innings in that World Cup quarterfinal against Bangladesh, a match that India was almost going to lose because of a very slow, slow batting first up. He repaid faith in those people who gave him that extra opportunity. Otherwise, he would be biting the dust playing for some club somewhere in Mumbai. But, you know, they gave him another opportunity despite a string of low scores, zeros, 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 cut behind, cut behind, cut behind. You know, they gave him another opportunity. And maybe... He, God has given us another opportunity, another year. And will we make it count? The people who started 2016, have, some of them have gone away. Jayalalitha has gone away. Died at a relatively young age for a politician, 68. If God is, if it is God's plan and will, we will enter the new year and I believe we will have a full year ahead of us. Will we make it count? Will that extra year which he has added because of his great grace and his tenderness and love, great love for us, will we make it count? And he has given us all that we need, the Holy Spirit, the, the fellowship of saints, uh, the scriptures. Uh, he has many orders, as this passage says. He has given us all that we need. But will we cooperate with him? Will we use that, what he has already given, so that we, can, we will make a difference? We will make a difference. We will go, will we go after lost souls? Will we use our take our talents to the place that God has called us uh, and and use those for the glory of God? Or will we keep burying our talents in the in 2017? Will we bear fruit? Will we bear fruit? So that's what. Uh, the Lord is asking us to do. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time. Thank you for this reminder from uh, Luke chapter 13, 6 to 9, this precious parable. Lord, we uh, thank you, Lord, for giving us an opportunity uh, to uh, live for you one more year. We come to the end of this year and we look forward to entering one more year, O oh Lord. And I pray that that and we have, uh, we believe that you have added that one, add one more year in our life because of your grace because of your love and because of your compassion and because of your mercy and because of your goodness. And I pray, Lord, that we will never take any of this for granted, your love, your mercy, grace, compassion, goodness for granted, but we will make it count. We will take what you have given us, Lord, uh, the scriptures, the, the fellowship of the saints, the, the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit, and we will actively cooperate with you so that all the great, grand, glorious plans that you have for us, Lord, will be fulfilled, O oh Lord. Will be fulfilled and we will, Lord, bring a whole bunch of people this 2017 closer to you. Whole bunch, not just a, 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 a whole bunch of people to, to the talents that you have graciously given us, to the giftings that you have put in our life. Lord, we will bring them closer to you. Lord, uh, Lord, we will bring them closer to you and we will thereby bear fruit for you, O oh Lord. Not give you the boot, but bear fruit, O oh Lord, in the one life that we have. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for your love and we thank you for your high priestly prayers for us. And if not for your prayers, we, will be, we would have perished. And if, if not for you, you pleading with the Father, Lord, uh, we may not even be seeing the 31st of... Uh, for December 2016, but because of your mercy and grace, yes, and we, but I pray that grace will propel us to good works as we read in the book of Titus, Lord, uh, it will propel us, it will energize us, will, will create in us a great enthusiasm to turn away from sin, turn away from, say no to ungodliness as we read in the book of Titus chapter 2 verse 12, say no to ungodliness and pursue good works. Uh, Lord, not because good works will save us, but because we are grateful to you and because we want to make a difference in this one life that you've given us. We want to thank you, Lord, for each one of us who have come here. I pray that, uh, Lord, the 2017, which we'll shortly enter, will be a year of bearing fruit for you and, uh, uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, living a life of, uh, Lord, joy and uh, living a life which will, Lord, uh, radiate Jesus yes. through life and limb. We thank you. In Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.